Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking and subscribing the channel is free and easy, and it helps me out a lot. If you want to go a little farther with your support, I have Patreon and YouTube membership available, which includes access to the Boston Roll Discord server, early access to things I'm working on, sideboard plans, cards I'm buying, you could have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use the YouTube membership option, you get sweet, unique YouTube badges and emotes for the channel. If you want to play what I'm playing, you can use the code Boston Roll to support my channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com. And if you're playing on Magic Online, a CardHoarder.com loan account can let you play any deck anytime. If you want to wear your support, there is Boston Roll merch available. All of these links are in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I am playing Legacy, and this is a brew challenge from subscriber Federico. Federico set the following stipulations. They wanted the deck to be black, they wanted it to draw cards, and they wanted it to be aristocrat style. If you're not familiar with aristocrat style, the that's an archetype named after the card Cartel Aristocrat. I think that was the name of the card anyway. It was a 2 mana 2-2 two -two that you can sack a creature to give it protection from a color of your choice until end of turn. And you paired that in standard at the time with a bunch of things that sacrificed for value. And then Blood Artist was your win condition whenever blood artist or another creature dies target player loses one life and you gain one life so basically it's a kind of contraption deck where you have a bunch of creatures that don't care if they live or die for the most part and then sacrifice outlets to gain value when those creatures live and die and blood artists to drain life along the way and that's the aristocrats deck this version of that deck is inspired by a deck called zombardment named after Goblin Bombardment, one in a red enchantment, sacrifice a creature, deal one to anything, and the fact that the deck is full of zombies. That's the Zombardment name. This is a deck brewed up by Sam Black it, back in ancient times. I don't even remember what year it was, like 2011, 2012 maybe. And Sam Black, basically I think Gravecrawler was the card that inspired the deck, where Sam realized that if you have a zombie and a Gravecrawler, and Goblin Bombardment, you basically pay X to deal X damage to an opponent or any target every turn. And if you have Blood Artist in play, you're also draining out along the way. And it was just a cool deck that Sam came up with. And he top aided a Grand Prix, a Legacy Grand Prix, with this deck of his own design. It was a whole big thing at the time. Deck was super cool. But it's kind of fallen out of favor. Cards have gotten better. Legacy's changed. And things have changed along the way. But I'm here to bring it back. Interesting choices in this deck, outside of the core shell, which I've already explained. Genesis Chamber. I, saw, I did a lot of research for this league, actually. I, I did put a lot of time into trying to make this deck as fun, interesting, and playable as I could all at the same time. Genesis Chamber was a 3-of in a Zombardment 5-0 deck from a couple years ago. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, if Genesis Chamber is untapped, that creature's controller makes a 1-1 one -one mirror. So if you're grave crawling, if you're casting grave crawler two or three times a turn, double up, get four or six creatures instead. That's four or six bombardments. That's a bunch of artist triggers. That's extra counters on your carrion feeder. Big money. Stitcher supplier just didn't exist when this deck was big. This is a more recent printing than this deck is. So I put in two of those. I just didn't have room for four, and I didn't want to lean all the way into the graveyard and just die to rest in peace. Like, rest in peace is going to be bad enough. I don't want to lean all the way in. And the most recent hybrids of this deck, or builds of this deck, hybridized with Hogak, which does add a huge different layer to the deck. But I specifically avoided that at Federico's request, and I think I'll have more fun without that. Though it might be less powerful. Worth considering if you're serious about playing this deck. Village Rights is also a more recent printing that didn't exist during any previous iteration of this deck. And it goes right in with the theme. Unfortunately, it's still just worse than Faithless Looting. So I only had room for one instead of more of that. And I have a fun of one of Priest of Forgotten Gods. This is also a newer card. Tap it, sack two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life, sacrifice a creature. You add Black Black and draw a card. This thing is a one card engine, it's just a one of, it's pretty fragile for legacy, but if this game gets grindy and my opponent runs out of removal, this is exactly the sort of thing I want to be digging for. So, it's worth a shot. And of course, Lingering Souls, the original discard for fun and value in Mar 
in Orzhov colors make a bunch of things. Tide Hollow Scholar, it's more discard. You'll notice three Thoughtseize for Cabal Therapy already in the deck. Tide Hollow Scholar checks the hand. It's also a zombie itself, so it turns on Gravecrawler. And there's a cool trick with Tide Hollow Scholar. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You exile a card from it. When it leaves the battlefield, they get that card back. If you sacrifice Tide Hollow Scholar in response to exiling the card, then it will return the card before it exiles the card, thus exiling the card forever. So that is a cool trick that exists with the Sacrifice Atlas in Carrion Feeder and Goblin Bombardment in the deck. Sideboard is just full of powerful legacy cards. Kaya, Wear Terror, Pithing Needle. Alpine Moon is the one that isn't super common in legacy, but I think that this deck will struggle with Urza Saga decks, so I want multiple clean answers to that. I have Pithing Needle that can name Saga, I have Moon that can sweep them up, and that's my plan with there. Plague Engineer, just good cards, Sudden Edict, and of course, Mind Break Trap, Graveyard Hate, and a little bit of removal, just in case. The Oblivion Ring is a nod to show and tell, specifically, which I'm sure is very difficult to beat. You have your discard spells and not much else. And this deck is pretty slow, so uh, decks will have a chance to rebuild after your original flurry of discard spells. Okay. This is Federico's Zombardment Aristocrats. Let's get into these games. I'm on the play with kind of a heartbreaker. The thought sees is gas. The faithless looting's good, but I need a land to make this hand function, and I'm not willing to roll the dice on just drawing one naturally. Here we go. Luckily, the one of Genesis Chamber was in both of these opening hands. Sign me up for that. So I got a bottom one of these. That's how mulligans work. Regrettably. My opponent is a, a fan of the channel and they're saying please don't beat me too hard on stream. I, do, I wouldn't worry about that opponent. Okay, so I want to, I think, bottom one of these. I, so I hate it, but I think Genesis Chamber is the correct call to send to the bottom as much as I want that card. I would need a zombie to go with the grave crawler. And I'm likely to discard Genesis Chamber anyway. No, that's not true. Scrublands out. I'm keeping Genesis Chamber. Let's do the damn thing. This is what we signed up for, right? I'm going to Faithless Looting. I can get a little reckless with this because I have multiple cards that operate just fine out of the graveyard. Oh, baited a Force of Will out of that one. I'll take it. Not bad. Yeah, if they think I'm on Reanimator or something, that makes a whole lot of sense to do that. You got another Force of Will for this one. Here comes Genesis Chamber, let's do it. I'm just going to get my mana right and set up for a... And uh, if, if they have main deck back to basics or something, they're going to get me. But they pitched Ice Fang Kawaddle to Force of Will, so I'm not going to be playing around Wasteland here. And I can... Ooh, I can Thought Seize Therapy, or just... Stitcher therapy, or I could therapy, stitcher, re-therapy. There's a lot of stuff to, that can be done here. I think I'm going to take my time and set up the super clean cabal therapy. Just make sure I get something off every side of this. All right, glad I didn't do it twice. There's a row. And here's... I'm going to lead on stitcher. Awkward that evoking a row gives them a... A 1-1, one, one. <laughs> but that's what I signed up for. Smatic Vista, they're going to fetch three times and cast Uro. Uro is exactly the reason that decks like this aren't super popular anymore. That is just a difficult card to compete with. They appear to be some flavor of bug. I'm probably just going to lose to this Uro now. Cool. Welcome to Legacy, Zombardment. I can Cabal Therapy... Are there cards in their hand or deck that I care about or that other than Uro? I think I'm just going to attack with my two creatures first. They'll likely trade off Mirror for Mirror. Yep, that makes sense to me. And I think I should... In casting Bloodgast, kind of sucks. I would rather flashback Faithless Looting in the future with that. So here's Cabal Therapy. I'm just going to name... I think they would have cast a Brainstorm already if they had one. 
Or they would have cast Ponder. They might not have cast Brainstorm. I'm going to go with that. Just to back up Uro. Beautiful. You really hate to see it. I can still win this race if I find a Bombardment. Or a Blood Artist. Like This is still a game we can play. So you can imagine how this game would look if Uro wasn't involved. Like They would just be hellbent against this engine. Obviously Uro is involved. I'm, I'm just... All I'm saying is, in a world from two years ago, this deck would have been a very different situation. Or if we were just playing against a, a blue-white deck that doesn't have Uro. Just all of those things are on the table here. Oh, they played their Uro from hand. Interesting. I assumed they would just escape the first one. Blue, blue, green, green. Yeah, they did have the mana to do that. Okay, flashback looting is pretty dope here. Couldn't make my land drop first, unfortunately. Oh yeah, discard Grave Crawler and Bloodgast. That's what we're trying to do right now. And I'm going to attack with all my creatures. Got to keep the pressure on. Still don't want to trade off with my zombies. That makes some sense. Let's just hope there's no main deck Bajuka Bog over there in this bug deck. Oh, they're in a Lurin deck. That's why they didn't just bring back Uro next turn. They were digging. This is... <laughs> okay. Yeah, that changes a lot. And it's crazy they get a 1-1 every time they... Aluren out a creature. Thoughtseize. I don't think that's super helpful. But here is my Badlands, which gets back Bloodgast, which makes a Genesis Chamber token. And... Might as well thought seize them, I guess. If they have anything. Ooh, Living Wish. Oh, they had to tap out a green. That was a really good Living Wish. I'm going to attack with. Ah, uh, shit. I should have played Gravecrawler before combat. Now, if they block both my zombies. But then I get to mill. All right. I'm in for this. Yeah, if I played Gravecrawler before combat, this is a whole lot easier. Whoops. Deck is surprisingly hard. Okay, cool. It just didn't block. I will take that. I oh wait, I can cast this with a Lurin, right? Nice. Players may cast creature spells, mana value three or less. Oh yeah, I could have flashed in my grave crawler at any time. Dope. Alright, I'm actually just gonna Do I wait? Does waiting make any sense at all? Play spells with mana value 3 or less without paying their mana cost and as though they had flash. Yeah, I'll just wait. <laughs> what the hell? Cool. What's the rush? Please don't draw something that kills me. Living Wish Aloran, though. That's what we're playing against. Scary stuff. We know about the Uro. That's a redraw. And there's a lot of draws that just GG off the top. Uro triggers my chamber. Moment of truth. Did you find something important? They appear to be passing the turn. Or just getting in for one damage. Fair enough. Are they on? Does that mean they're on the beatdown plan? Okay, end of turn. Cast this with Aloran. Yes, this rules. And cast this one with Aloran as well. Get some mirrors. Come on, bombardment. Ooh, artist. Okay. Uh, oh, I can I can flash this in with a Lauren, so I can slow my roll. I can make my attacks, and then figure out what I want to do with everything. Guess I need to leave a blocker back for Oro. Oh wait, flashing in Blood Artist makes a blocker. Oh Jesus, scary. All right, I guess it's not that bad actually. Oh wait, every time they get targeted with Blood Artist, this is going to trigger. Whenever you are permanent, jeez. I don't think I have a different play though. Well, yes I do. I could simply not cast Blood Artist, which I think has to be the line. Like I can't just let the Aluren player draw 100 cards right now. Yeah, I would feel okay other than Uro. Card's real good. Oh, no block. They can't be trading off things. If they didn't have Leovold, I would be in much better shape here. Abrupt decay my chamber. Alright, I'll cast Blood Artist in response. Get one more for the road. See you later, Genesis Chamber. You're actually pretty freaking sweet. 
All right, so bombardment. That's not what I wanted. So I gotta attack with some stuff. This is a vampire. This is a vampire. This is my only zombie that's still around. All right, I'm just gonna attack with everything. I'm not winning a game where I don't attack. Guess I just have to kind of hope to spew damage and they continue to brick on GG cards with Aloran. Right. I am actually... Yeah, I guess I have to. I could target myself and just lose one life and gain it right back. But I don't think that's the play. Wall therapy. That doesn't really matter. Yeah, with my... Or I could... Wall therapy using... Stitcher, that's a play. They do end up with a lot of extra cards in their hand, and they can win at instant speed. We win this game if they don't have Leovol, just saying. Like, if I can make an all-out attack last turn with Blood Artist without letting them draw 100 cards, if this game is won. Endurance, FML. All right, well, at least I can cast my Grave Crawler. They're going to get my Lingering Souls, though. Okay, so they get to Endurance me for free. I'm going to name Cavern Harpy. Though I think they would have just won in response. I'm going to name Living Wish. Because they could have just Harpied in response to win the game. But Living Wish, Aluren, two Zeniths, and a Decay. Alright, I'm probably dead to these Zeniths. I accept that. If true. I'm actually just dead to combat. I can't block as much damage as they're attacking with. Okay, and they top deck Azarek anyway. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, this game, minus, like, Uro is a nightmare, but then I actually think I had Uro raced if they didn't also have Leovold. So what is the play now? I want Mindbreak Trap. I want Spellbomb. I want Swords to Plowshares. I don't think Sudden Edict is important. Kaya's probably kind of important. Like, I have to control the the Alluren side of things, and I also have to control the Uro side of things, which is a lot to ask of my deck. But I don't need to do either for too long. I think that Genesis Chamber's gotta go. They just have too many creatures in their deck. I think Priest is gonna be too slow for this matchup. I need all my sack outlets, all my discard, all my draw spells. Maybe Lingering Souls is a little too slow for the matchup as well. Is every one of these sideboard cards I would rather have than Lingering Souls. Bloodgast is one of the better ones to discard or mill over, but it doesn't do anything except come in and out of play. It, I need to cut two more things for these sideboard cards. Maybe I don't need all the Nile spell bombs if I'm bringing in Kaya's. Because Uro's not particularly fast to arrive. I think I do need all of the wear tears though, because killing a Lauren is pretty important. Sudden Eat it could also catch uh, Azerac. This this is just getting harder and harder to sideboard. My life is pain. A village rights is good. I think maybe Stitcher Supplier isn't doing what I need it to in this matchup. I feel like my graveyard with stuff isn't really the point. And now that we've seen Endurance, all of that gets a lot harder. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. We've managed to queue into a weirdly difficult matchup just in round one. Okay, uh, Cabal Therapy. This hand is not particularly explosive, but it's not bad either. I'm going to fetch and play Carrion Feeder. Get my Badlands set up. I can start doing zombie stuff next turn if I draw a zombie and this deck doesn't combo off until turn four usually like at best so I want to give them a chance to sculpt their hand get an Aloran in it before I go to discard the Aloran if I draw a grave crawler or blood ghast here I can feed the carrier and immediately recur the thing and start pressuring or I could draw tide hollow sculler Now's the hard part. Do I want a 2-2 two -two in play, or do I want to permanently exile a card? And I think I'd rather have a 2-2 two -two in play right now. This also sets up my Cabal Therapy. Gives me all the information I want for that. 
Burrow, two living wish, abrupt decay, endurance. I think I have to take decay. Yeah, if I don't, or they're pretty far away from decay because they fetch that basic island. So maybe I take Uro. Yeah, that's not a card I can beat under normal circumstances. We'll see if they want to cast a living wish this turn. They know that I'm a Cabal Therapy deck. So they're incentivized to get the redundant copy of a card out of their hand. But whatever they wish for, I could also just take that because it's face up. Looks like they're casting a wish here. I would do the same thing. Yep. Plague Engineer. Okay, that can name Zombo and hurt me pretty good. Ooh, speaking of hurting me pretty good. Gonna Cabal Therapy. Actually gonna name Endurance for the first one. Just get that out of here. And then I'm gonna name Plague Engineer for the other one. Plague Engineer. And then I can attack for three. And I could also just lose my carrion feeder to take the Abrupt Decay. Do I think that's actually good? Because Abrupt Decay unlocks Uro, which is a huge problem for me. They're basically left with Living Wish in hand if I make this move. Or I could just hold my horses. Like, do I think that having an engine card in play and this tenuous 2-2 versus their whole deck, including Living Wish. I think I'm going to go for it and take the Abrupt Decay. That is how big of a problem Uro is. Now imagine that same turn with a Bloodgast or Gravecrawler involved. Their hand is just empty. I have a 4-4. Four, four. Like that, that's what the deck's trying to do. Obviously, it hasn't quite come together here. Another Living Wish. Is there an Uro in the sideboard? There is. Bummer. Did all that work? Okay, Blood Gas, look at you showing up right after you're helpful. I guess the question is, if I Cabal Therapy and take Uro, is it better to just get it out of their hand? I don't think that the answer to that question is yes. I could have checked for a Lawrence, I guess. If the Cabal Therapy is free to use, I like, the only thing it costs me is that Cabal Therapy is not in my graveyard for the future anymore. If they just jam a Lauren right now, that that sucks. Definitely appears to be what's happening, though. Alright, I'll fetch in response. Yeah, definitely should have checked for a Lauren. I passed the turn without even really thinking about that. Okay, a Lauren's in. They're going to get to Uro. I'm not going to Edict yet. I'm trying to catch the Azerac. One card left over there. There it is. Okay, I mean, I still have to beat this Uro in the graveyard, but at least I'm not dead right now. Let's top deck a uh, Nile Spellbomb and win this game. Right, they scryed to the bottom. Guess that's worth something to me. Just trying to get some damage through now before they figure it out, but Uro looming. Huge beating. Completely changed the rules of Legacy, that card, when it was printed. Would have been a great turn to draw Kaya or Nile Spellbomb, but of course, I did not. Oh, Swords of Plowshares? Oblivion Ring? Okay. We're dead to this arrow. GG's opponent. Yeah, this deck, asking it to control a combo deck is one thing. Asking it to control an arrow is another thing, and my opponent just doing both is... Pretty rough start to the league, but that's okay. Uh, we at least see what this deck's trying to do. If I drew Bloodgast a turn earlier and got to clip with my Cabal Therapies and grow my Carrion Feeder. Uh, also, I I missed this. Like, if I didn't have to, if they didn't have a Lauren, I wouldn't have to have spent my Edict on Azerac. And if I still had my Edict, I could clear this Uro and like try to work through this the hard way. Oh, uh, and draw Kaya. Yeah, I think if I just remember to Cabal Therapy on that pre Aloran turn, then I might actually win this game. Tough, tough deck to play correctly. Next round's coming. I'm on the draw, and this hand's actually pretty great. Multiple points of disruption, a looting, and an easy card to discard. It's a fine place to get started. A Flooded Strand. Okay, Flooded Strand Basic Island is very close to what I want to see out of 
an opponent. Delver is not what I want to see, but it is interesting what they might be doing with this basic island Delver deck. A lot of the is the Delver decks are off basic island at this point, so this deck this could just be an older list. All right, it is an older list, but it still checks out. I think I have to take ponder this turn. I can take true name on the next turn or iteration on the next turn. Yeah, I'm taking ponder now though. Like casting iteration on turn two for full value is pretty hard. Like I don't care about anticipate. I care about divination. I remember when I took ponder. They just drew another one. If I can answer this delver. If I can find a bombardment and start bombarding the delver. I'm actually not that far behind here. But of course. That is a big if. And I was excited about the double thoughts he's hand until we're playing against the turn one delver on the play with lightning bolt hand. They did not shuffle their ponder. I'm going to thought seize first and then faithless looting. Just make sure I don't get countered in some way that I care about. All right, there is a force of negation there. I'm going to take the true name. And if they want to force some negation, my faithless looting and go hellbent to do it, go for it. Okay, they did want to do it. So their hand is Lightning Bolt right now. All right. This is a game that we might be able to win. Let's go. Delver puts me to nine. Bolt can put me to six at will. Another looting. Yes, yes, yes. I was going to Gravecrawler and sack my rights. Or sack the Crawler to rights. But I think this line is better at this point. So sack my Crawler. I'm going to play Bombardment. And I got to draw a creature. Like any zombie does it. Any a blood gas does it. Here's this card. Please don't daze me. Oh, so much worse. Got spell snared. Jesus. Okay. Well, that one mystery card off the top of their deck was a good one. They put me to five. They can bolt me to two. I am dead on board. Oh, wow. Delver's good. A lot of threats in that deck. All right. I'm going to concede. I can't win now. There was a brief window there where it could have happened. Okay, so I'll Plague Engineer, Kaya, Sudden Edict. I'm just bringing in everything that is a removal spell. Maybe not Oblivion Ring, but maybe also Oblivion Ring. We'll see. Uh, Lingering Soul's real good. Genesis Chamber, probably not where I want to be. I don't really care about sculling them. Supplier's fine. Rights is fine. Blood gas doesn't block particularly well, and by well I mean it all. And that is important in this matchup. The rights, the... I think supplier is still good. Oh, I don't really need thought seizes in this matchup. Not the full boat of them anyway. Is Oblivion Ring better than that? What, is thought seize better than therapy? I don't think so. These are out. I could bring in my Nile spell bombs to try to control their graveyard. We didn't see Dragon Rage Channeler, Murktide Region, or Ragavan that game. But I expect all of them are in the deck. I am going to run it like this. Okay. This is my deck. Well, can't keep the no-lander. Send it. I will keep this hand. Stitcher has enough upside. I'm going to give it a shot. If they want to spend a turn wasting me, I'm okay with that. So I'm just, I'm not going to run out a basic on this. Aggressive with the Force of Wills. Force Pitching Expressive Iteration. Powerful stuff. Oh, their rug. What year is it? Okay, so I'm going to Cabal Therapy and I'm going to see how they respond to it. And I hope it's not Veil of Summer. Like if they don't brainstorm in response, I'll probably name brainstorm. If they do brainstorm in response, I'll have to think about it. I might just name Daze. Because that'll clear the way for my engineer. Got a Daze. Take it. They have Goyf, Extraction, Ponder, Bolt. Powerful stuff. They must have just drawn the Surgical Extraction or else you don't force a will, Stitcher Supplier. If... 
you have surgical in your hand. Because I don't think you do. Oh, they drew a land for the turn. That was good. Oh, they hit it with Brainstorm. Wait, why would you hide a land? It doesn't even make sense. Okay, Tarmogorf's in play. That Lightning Bolt's really good. There's a pause here. They're thinking about firing off Surgical on my Cabal Therapy. If they do that now, it's just a huge mistake. They should at least wait until my draw step. They could also just wait until there's a creature on the stack because they can't cast this anyway. Or they're going after a supplier. That also should have waited for the draw step. If you wait for my draw step, there's a chance I draw another copy and you get an extra card off of that. This is definitely a hashtag don't surgical that situation though. They just have this card itching that they just want to cast so desperately. But it doesn't make sense. Like that card's not doing anything in the graveyard. Who cares? There will be better targets. And I will occasionally thought seize you. Get that lightning bolt out of your hand. It sucks to leave them with a ponder, but the bolt answer is Plague Engineer, which is my only play right now. Okay, here's Ponder. Wife's a 3-4 because they exiled my thing. Like that also shrunk their goyf while also being irrelevant. They chose to shuffle. Come on deck, hook it up. Ooh, bombardment. I still have to lead on engineer. I can't just keep getting bashed by this goyf forever. Brainstorm, just aggressive brainstorm in response. If you have lightning bolt in your deck, you don't force a will this. Like that's just this doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, I am going to name... I can name Human and get ahead of Delver. Or I can name Merfolk and get ahead of True Name Nemesis. And I think that's more important. Or I'm going to name Rogue, actually. Because Brazen Borrower and True Name Nemesis are both rogues. And Hallbreacher is a Merfolk, but... Plague Engineer doesn't kill it, and I also don't care about it, and they might not have it in their deck. All of those things are true. So Rogue is the place that overlaps with another creature that might actually be in their deck. Alright, they didn't attack. Ooh hoo hoo. Bloodgast. Okay, Bloodgast. Gonna Cabal Therapy them. Gonna name Spell Snare, I think. After seeing it last game, I don't want my Bombardment to get snared. Okay, that's fine. You got me. That did its job of protecting my goblin bombardment. I'm not going to fetch yet. Oh, that's so good. Okay, please don't have spell snare. Or stifle, I guess that would be pretty bad too. I mean, they clearly have answers. Alright, another surgical, sure. This was actually a good target for surgical extraction, unlike the last one. Is Snare the last card in their hand, or are they still rolling a land? Okay. Bombardment's in. We've done what the deck's supposed to do. Next turn, I can play Lingering Souls, which on the following turn can start clocking them. Okay, brainstorm. Fortunate draw from the opponent. Because we know the card in their hand wasn't good. Even if that was Ponder, they would have had to keep the card in their hand that wasn't good. But Brainstorm gets to get rid of that card that was not helping them, and great card. Obviously, I don't need to explain that Brainstorm is a good card for Legacy. Ooh, Feeder. Uh, Lingering Souls goes in first, though. Trying to use all my mana. Okay, aggressive, but probably worth it. Bet you wish you had a Surgical Extraction in your hand that you didn't waste on an irrelevant card six turns ago. It looks like their Brainstorm bricked. They're definitely working through a brainstorm lock here. And I am going to play my land so I can play around days with all this stuff and spell peers. Wow. Oh, well, I mean, that was a two for one all day. I would have preferred winning the game with Lingering Souls over a two for one, but that's still a two for one. And this Delver deck has actual counter spell in it. Time to draw a Grave Crawler and just go insane. Second Bombardment. That doesn't do anything. I could discard it to Lingering Souls, so I'm going to just hold back on it. Rather than play a second one. This Drago game is kind of stressful. Blood Artist, okay. That's a playable card. Let's jam it straight into the Spell Snare. 
Yep. Cool. I thought about trying to bait them with a goblin bombardment because the way they've played so far, I think they really would have just jammed their spell on literally anything. But playing around spell snare versus playing around days was my calculation there. I wonder how many rogues are in their hand right now. Just gonna pass the turn again. I wonder if they're holding up hard cast force of negation. Just trying to figure out what they're doing with all this mana. Oh yeah. Are we in business? Let's find out. Goyf is a 4-5, so I could kill it. Or I could make carry and feeder huge. Yeah, attacking with my 5-5 five five is the same thing, right? Do they have a third surgical extraction? Do they have endurance? Alright. Wow. This deck is hateful. I don't like it. Okay. That's not a rogue. It did shrink Tarmogoyf a little. Wow, endurance really messes up the the deal here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna trade with Tarmogoyf and just like I can't get hit with that thing too many times. If they follow up with True Name Nemesis, it is what it is. Okay, this is what I've been holding this Goblin Bombardment for. Let's see if they have a Hardcast Force of Negation. Yup. Rough. Oh, I can attack now. This is going to be one of those matches that showcases just the power of Delver, just the power of this shell. I believe my opponent has played extremely poorly for the entire game, but it's just not going to matter at all. If they have a second Endurance, I can't beat it anyway, so I'm just going to make my attack. If they block, they block. Here comes another three. Another Goyf. That's going to shut the door. What can I even draw right now? Well, if anything can save me. It's a fresh handful of options. Force of Will, Pitching Delver. Okay, so I have to fetch, go to three. Flashback looting. And there's not a whole lot left in the deck that would be any good here. And it's certainly not those cards. All right. Out controlled by Delver. This is a particularly weird, hateful mid-range rug version the actual counter spell was pretty good on lingering souls the endurance was out of control tarmogoyf is just huge my opponent definitely d came to not lose this bombardment and they didn't so next round we're about halfway through the video so let me just remind you that if you like this deck and you want to try it out you can use the code boston roll to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com and you can play any deck anytime with cardhoarder.com loan account on magic online these links are in the video description below now back to the league i'm on the draw in round number three with a nice mix of lands and spells i have two sack outlets and two token generators which is pretty nice finding a thought see somewhere would be cool Oh god, Tree of Tales. Oh man, we're getting the Phil Gallagher special. We're about to get Glimpse Affinity. Okay, Ornithopter. Lotus Petal. Shield Sphere. Rexian Walker. Wait, this doesn't get scary until they start casting 4-4s. Four if you want to see this deck in action, Phil Gallagher at Thrabenu on YouTube has released multiple videos with it. Salvage Titan. Yikes. Okay. There's that. Okay. I mean, that was kind of expensive for them to do. Genesis Chamber is a complete fucking nightmare in this matchup. Wow. Okay. It's fine. What's the play? Eventually, I'd like to get Lingering Souls into play. But I think I want to lead on my Carrion Feeder. I'm under some heavy assault from this Salvage Titan. I'm going to take six here. Let's see what their hand can do is the the real trick. If they're just going to attack me for six a couple times, I this is a game I can win. If they have more stuff, this is not a game I can win. Oh, geez, another glimpse. And I certainly prefer they have a second glimpse turn before I play my Genesis Chamber, which I regrettably think that I do have to cast if I'm going to have a chance in this game. Box Opal. Oh, monitor. Oh, yeah. We're dead now. Okay. Harsh League. The good news is, I know that I have to mulligan to a counterspell. Or not a counterspell, a discard spell. 
And I know what I need to name with Cabal Therapy. It's Glimpse of Nature. Without Glimpse, this deck just does not function at all. It is a one card deck, which is little uh it is a little comfort when they have the one card. But it is a one card deck. I don't think Mind Break Trap is important here. I don't think Kaya is important either. Null Rod is great. That's going to hit all their lands. Wear Tear is just two mana Vindicate, which is like not super exciting, but isn't bad either. I think all the rest of this stuff is kind of a pipe dream. Maybe I do want the Mind Break Trap just in case. Like if I can hit their Salvage Titan at the top end of the thing, then I just have to beat a bunch of zeros. Priest is no good here. Genesis Chamber. Oh my god, is that dangerous. What else gets the chop? I need looting, I need Sculler. In Blood Artist, it could be insane in this matchup, because they do seem to want to sacrifice their creatures to do stuff. I think Stitcher Supplier can go as well. This is what I'm going to do. Now let's do it. Okay, I have double Thoughtseize in the opener. I'm going to keep this. The Faithless Looting is excellent with Bloodgast and Gravecrawler. This is probably the best hand I've had in this entire league so far. Gonna get a Badlands, Thoughtseize now, Faithless Looting later. Opponent kept six. Let's see how many glimpses are in that six card hand. Okay, there's a Glimpse and a Noxious Revival, so that's how that works. That plays around Discard, that's pretty cool. A target card from a graveyard on top of its owner's library. I wonder if that's Graveyard Hate or if it's part of their combo. It's gotta just be the combo, right? Well. I'll take the glimpse. I'll make them spend two life to get it back. Yep, so they're gonna draw at least two cards. We know they drew glimpse for turn, so that wasn't free. Battle. Glimpse. I guess we only know about one card, the Shield Sphere. Uh, they've drawn one mystery card this turn, and their hand is Salvage Titan Frogmite. So you're saying there's a chance. All right, Dak, don't fail me now. Got to find a land off this looting. Perfect. Put back Bloodgast and Gravecrawler. Bring my Bloodgast back into play. I'm going to hit them with a backup Thoughtseize just in case. Thought Monitor, Frog might Salvage Titan. Yeah, I'll take the Thought Monitor. Okay. Now the one card deck is looking like it's a one card deck. When Shield Sphere blocks, put a minus O minus one counter on it. So I do get to bash, and I drew a zombie for my grave crawler. In with Bloodgast. Then I'm going to Sculler them, and also cast grave crawler. Take another Thought Monitor, I guess. And here's Crawler. Blood Artist is going to join the fun next turn. My best top deck is probably Carrion Feeder. I attack with all my stuff. Then I probably Faithless Looting. I don't really want, or I should cast the Graveyard Faithless Looting, I think. Yeah, I don't really need Blood Artist in play right now, so I'm going to use the Looting from the Graveyard. Discard these extra lands. And I'm going to slow roll a land in case I end up with a Blood Gas in my Graveyard before my the end of my main phase next turn. Okay, they packed it up. Double thoughts, he's too good. Now now we have to get one on the draw. This is the hard part. Plague Engineer. This costs three. Like Even if I can name Construct or whatever the hell Memnite is, I don't think that matters. Yeah, this is just still the play here. Well, my opponent kept seven. Must be nice. I have a Thoughtseize, though. I have Thoughtseize and Faithless Looting. This is the best I can reasonably hope for, I think. A Glimpse of Nature. M. Night, what a twist. Ornithopter, this turns on Opal. Shield Sphere. Their land for turn. Paddle. Periodic Creatures, is it time? Oh, I'm getting a turn, wow. What, what a twist, okay. I'm going to get red because I want to Faithless Looting before I make my land drop next turn. I am going to Thought Seize now though. Let's, let's check the hand. What's left over. 
nothing. Okay, so I need them not to draw Thought Monitor for a couple turns, basically. They can attack me for one. I am winning this race, currently. They have a lot of bangers they could draw, though. Oh, Thoughtcast, great. Right off the top. Thoughtcast into Thoughtcast. That couldn't have been just like Mox Opal, or one of the thousands of zeros in the deck. Back up to three cards in hand, and they drew a glimpse. Which means they have some number of creatures left. Memnite. Another thought cast. Can we pass the turn, please? Uh, Frogmite. That's a real creature with power and toughness. Rexian Walker is not. Another Opal. And they pass the turn. Okay. Jeez. Looting. Discard two Blood Gas. And then play my land for turn. Get my Blood Gas. They're in play. Carry and feeder. In you go. If I can get this Blood Artist into play, or, yeah, I mean, this could still happen. Okay, just all four Thought Casts have been cast. They're 24 cards into their deck at this point. None of my creatures are capable of blocking, so they do get to attack for four here. Love to draw a land, actually. Gravecrawler, what do you do? So I can Bombardment and just pick some stuff off. I think I want a looting first. I'd really like to find a land. Of course, I did not. Discard Gravecrawler and one of these lootings, I suppose. I'm gonna attack with all my creatures. Or, no, no reason to do that. They have a bunch of zero threes. I guess, no. I, I'm not gonna commit anything here that I don't have to. It's going to cast Gravecrawler from the graveyard and be ready to Zombardment next turn, if there is a next turn. And they have five cards in hand. They drew a thousand cards last turn and still didn't do anything. Oh, there's a the third glimpse. Halfway through their deck, they have three quarters of their glimpses in all of their thought casts. Memnite, Rogmite, Noxious Revival, Targeting Glimpse of Nature. Okay. I think I like that. Salvage Titan. So they just drew a glimpse of nature off the first glimpse of nature. So their hand has glimpse in it. That's fine. Can I draw a land now, please? Wear tear. Is that better than a land? Is it the same as a land? What's going on? I could play my Goblin Bombardment, which doesn't do anything. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm at two on board right now. I could play Blood Artist, which... Nope, none of these creatures block. So I would take six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I can go up to twelve exactly, and then die. Uh, not finding that land last turn is murdering me. Stitcher Supplier can block, notably. That is relevant. Okay, so I'm going to play Stitcher, who can block. Mill 3. There's a Cabal Therapy in my graveyard now. I know they have Glimpse of Nature in their hand. I think I have to cast this Faithless Looting. Okay, discard another Therapy, and does Wear Tear get me out of this? Wear Tear kills Salvage Titan. The, I need the Bombardment, but I also need the Blood Artist. I actually just need all of these cards, which I'm not allowed to have them all, unfortunately. And that's how magic works. Assuming I get to cast one next turn, I have to keep the Swamp. That's non-negotiable. I think I also need the Bombardment. Yeah, I have to discard the Wear Tear here. And then Cabal Therapy. Sacking Blood Ghast. In a glimpse of nature. We know that's over there. Two Tree of Tails and Glimpse of Nature is their hand right now. I have to play my land. Return Blood Gas to play. And since it's free to do, I'm gonna. S oh, I missed a plus one counter. I should have sacked the other Blood Gas before I played my land. Okay. Playing Gravecrawler. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to two here. Chump blocking the Salvage Titan with Stitcher. 
and then hope to draw a land. Fetch land's even better. That's my whole plan right now, the whole game. Block, Salvage Titan with Stitcher. I go to two. Oh, I go to one. I missed one. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, they had a third Memnite. Never mind. Don't want to fetch land, please, deck. Actually, no, it's still fine, because I'll gain life before it matters. All right, deck, help me out here. Fetch land off the top. Any land, but specifically fetch. Fuck. Okay. I think we just lost. Yeah, I needed... If I can play Blood Artist and Bombardment, I can do what I need to do here. But I can still play Blood Artist, because that can block. I can play Artist, and then attack with all of my creatures that can't block. Here they come. Maybe I can kill a Shield Spear on my way out here and get an extra Blood Artist trigger. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think gaining an extra life is worth more than dealing 4 damage to my opponent right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, chump. I think I'm still dead. But I am going to sack these creatures. Yeah, if I draw a land... If, if I had drawn a land at any point in the last several turns... I would be able to have a second blocker here, or I'd be killing their attackers instead of just doing nothing here. Plus, I would be getting blood gas triggers. I go to five when the shield sphere dies. Then I can replay grave crawler. Oh, do I, I still have a cabal therapy in the graveyard? Does that get me the extra life point that I'm looking for? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still... No, I had the life point anyway. Oh no, okay. I still get one more turn. I can chomp, block, block. Alright, I get one more turn. Because it's when Blood Artist or any other creature dies. So I chomp with... I chomp Salvage Titan with Blood Artist, sack the Grave Crawler, and then sack the Artist. Still not good, but... I'm not literally dead. Unless I'm miscounting again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, I'm miscounting again. <laughs> it's the same thing. Why can't I do this? 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I'm just like one short. Again. I cast a lot of Faithless Lootings this game and just never hit a fourth land. Maybe the deck needs another land in it. Yeah, just that one Mem Knight. That one extra Mem Knight. Ugh. Dead for Exaxes. Okay. Maybe the deck needs another land. Like, if I tr just trigger Bloodgast once this game, I think I win it. If Bombardment's in play, I think I win. Harsh. Harsh, harsh, harsh. You can see how this would work, though. It's very close. I also think I win this match on the play, if I get to Thoughtseize their Glimpse game one. Okay, whatever. Next round. On the draw in round number four. I'm going to keep this. Hyper Disruptive. I'll get to know what I'm doing, or what I'm playing against. Okay, they let on Ponder instead of Delver. I'm gonna take that. I guess I just hope this is Sneak and Show and not even Delver. I was gonna fetch Basic Swamp, but now that I actually have a red card, I'm gonna cast Thoughtseize off of Scrubland and just fuck a Wasteland. Ponder, Brainstorm, Murktide, Rage. I'm gonna take Brainstorm. They're pretty far away from Murktide Regent and keeping control of what's in this hand, or keeping aware of what's in this hand, is worth a lot to me right now. There's the Ponder. There's the Tundra. Ponder did not shuffle the library. Okay, time to figure out what the line is here. I think the line is... Oh. Nope, never mind. I was going to say the line is something involving Bloodgast and Faithless Looting, but I don't get to do all that right now, because I didn't have a red source to start the turn. I'm just going to Cabal Therapy to start. I'm going to name Murktide Regent. I want that card gone. I have another Brainstorm, another Ponder. If they want to force a will, my Faithless Looting, have at it. Loots Magoots. Definitely Bloodgast, and I think lands are more important than other things right now. 
The Blood Artist will matter eventually. Stitcher seems pretty good here, though. Do I think that Scholar is going to be helpful at all? I actually think it's Scholar. It's either Scholar or Supplier. I think it's Scholar. See you later, Scholar. Here's that Ponder we know about. They tapped their White Source to cast it. That's interesting. They see Bloodgast in the graveyard and they just don't care about Source to Plowshares. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm going to cast Stitcher first in case I hit a second Bloodgast off of the mill. Like so. I'm going to Therapy Swords to Plowshares immediately. They brainstorm in response, probably hiding the Swords to Plowshares. I'm still going to name Plow though. Or no, I probably name Force of Will. I'm going to name Force. And that will get my Bombardment in there. Oh, they have Days in their hand? What a maniac. Okay. So Days is in their hand. Okay, here come my Blood Gas. They can't exile both of them. Use the ability. Use the ability. Oh, I have another Therapy. Easy money. Okay. Supplier must have milled that. I just didn't even see it. Okay, they've conceded. Alright, yeah. Hitting the second... Therapy off of... Oh yeah, I didn't even look at the second round of Supplier when I cast Therapy. I was busy thinking about my name. And I milled into a second Therapy, which would clear the days, which lets me Bombardment, and then we GG. Okay, we appear to be playing against one of those Jeskai Merc decks. Whether it's the Predict version or the Rag Still version remains to be seen. Regardless, I think that this is going to be a Saga deck. Oh yeah, we've seen Retrofitter Foundry. We know it's a Saga deck. Swords to Plowshares will be an important answer to a Murktide if it ever happens. Wear Tear is good. I don't know if I want to attack the Graveyard specifically. Though Kaya is actually real good. Because she exiles anything that Saga can get or any Saga tokens. I'll think about Nullrod. Because the tokens that attack are the ones that I'm worried about, and they don't need to be activated. I'm going to shave on Scholars. Scholars are really good at turning on Gravecrawler, of course, but at the same time, they're kind of clunkers against these hyper-efficient legacy decks. Tide Hollow Scholar is not a card that's survived the test of time very well. This used to be a, an eternal magic staple from like modern back to vintage, and it's just not anymore. Not even close. Artist, if they're going to rest in peace, but I, they can't play rest in peace because they're a Murktide Regent deck, so I don't have to worry about rest in peace. I do have to worry about things like Soul Guide Lantern and Tormod's Crypt, that kind of stuff they are going to have. So Bloodgast is going to be good. Or Blood Artist is going to be good. Bloodgast is okay. They're probably going to have Graph Digger's Cage. So that's something they can play. That makes Gast a lot worse. I do want Genesis Chamber, though. Hell yeah. Sign me right up for that. Kaya and Weartear all remove a Graft Digger's Cage from play, so I don't need to give too much respect to that. I'm actually going to shave on a Cabal Therapy as well. Card's a lot worse when you're not guaranteed to be recurring your creatures. Uh-oh, 61 card special. Oh right, the Null Rod I didn't actually want. In we go. I'm going to keep this. Faithless Looting is a good card. Got two Bombardments. I like what I'm looking at here. Don't like that Ragavan, but I don't think they're going to have a lot of use for the cards that are in my deck. Uh, use Badlands. I don't have a basic. If they just like Ragavan Wasteland me out of this game, is what it is. We discard Therapy and one of the redundant Bombardments, I think. I'm going to have to take a couple cracks from Rag here. There's the Saga. Here comes Ragavan. They got my Blood Artist, oh no. That's really bad for them to have. I was going to say most of the cards in their deck, my deck aren't good for them, but that one is. Young Pyromancer was the play. That one makes a lot of sense. And me without my Plague Engineer. Alright, I'm going to move on Bombardment. Unfortunately, this plays into every counter spell, but my deck doesn't accelerate mana at all. Brainstorm in the end step. 
it's pretty aggressive to push the extra damage instead of being able to shuffle the brainstorm. But I guess if your plan is to activate Saga, you're not doing that anyway. Here comes a huge crunch of damage. Why would they fetch before damage? That's weird. Oh, not putting lingering souls in my graveyard, probably a good idea. Okay. Do I swing for the fences with Genesis Chamber or do I do Gravecrawler stuff? I think I do Gravecrawler stuff. I shoot Young Pyromancer. Play Carrion Feeder. While I have priority, play Gravecrawler. And then I can shoot Ragavan on their turn. Oh, they're going to get Pithing Needle though. So I need to shoot Ragavan. Now, I guess. Yeah, they can get Graveyard Hate instead because I did it this way. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, I've done what I can. I think that was a pretty good turn, all things considered. The Saga Tutor just kind of has me checkmated here because if I search for... If I wait, they get Pithing Needle and turn off Bombardment. If I go now, they get a Graveyard piece and lock me out that way. I take five from this. I could save a damage by shooting, losing, yeah, I think I actually do save a damage. If I take five, then I take more, All right? I think I have to Kaya here, unless I draw a creature. That's pretty good. And I died a Daze or a Force of Will, but that's also true if I go with Kaya. Age, obviously, really good here. Okay, I'm going with Kaya. Because I lose if they have a counter spell either way, and I'm going to go for the better card. Kaya resolved. I take out one of the constructs. I'm dead on board. I don't get to take out the Graft Digger's Cage. But Kaya kept me from being dead. Also removes a lot of clock off of the other construct. Gives me enough time to put Lingering Souls in front of it, I hope. Rest of iteration. Always a good card. It does seem like you're mostly making a mistake if you're not doing that sort of thing in Legacy right now. Like, if you aren't playing Expressive Iteration or keeping up with it, what are you even doing? And as fun as I'm having with this deck, I just don't think we're there. Please attack my face. Uh, they know how to attack my Planeswalker. Bummer. Um, Lingering Souls, still dead to a counter spell, but that's going to be true for the rest of the game. Just doesn't even matter. Okay, days and... One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I, I can't get through this. Okay, uh, Plague Engineer, I'm more interested in now than I was before. I'm already playing all my answers. I mean, I'm not playing Oblivion Ring, but I don't really count that as an answer to anything. It just costs three, it basically doesn't exist. I could bring in Needle and name Urza Saga. I guess I have to do that. Like, I, I committed to that world. Better live in it. Oh, Alpine Moon is good. Saga's good. Or, uh, Needle's good. Artist is fine. I have a lot of cards that are good if they don't have Graft Digger's Cage and terrible if they do. I, I think maybe another therapy should go. And it's like all of my creatures I can just put into play and limp over the finish line with if necessary. We know they still have days in the deck. We didn't see a force that game. But they were on the play, so they might do like the days on the play force on the draw thing. But days is really good against my deck anyway. Like I do try to cast three drops and spend all my mana every turn without accelerating. I think I'm gonna cut a stitcher. Is with the all the additional graveyard hate and stuff, boast board. Stitcher seems like kind of a liability. I'm on a kind of a critically low zombie count at this point. Gravecrawler just might not be able to loop. Uh, Faithless Looting Hand. Do I trust Faithless Looting to do the thing? Yep. Let's go. Fetch for Badlands with my Bloodstained Mire. Loot. Didn't find anything that comes with value. Unfortunately, that was just a genuine draw to discard to. They have Ragavan. I think I play my... Aryan Feeder off of Basic Swamp and pass the turn. I mean, that's obviously the play I'm going to make, it's just what land I'm going to play. And I don't know if this incentivizes Wasteland or if it just doesn't matter. All of that is unknown to me. Faithless Looting is pretty cool. 
But if they cast it, it ends up in my graveyard. I feel like I wouldn't walk away from that. I don't know what's in their hand, but Faithless Looting is a, a magic card. Saga for them. Ponder. Soul Guide Lantern, that's pretty good. There's that Graveyard Hate we knew was coming. They did not cast my Faithless Looting, coward. Now I have a choice. The Needle is kind of interesting because naming Saga, but then I still don't have Ragavan under control. I think I'm going to go with Plague Engineer. This is the one I care less about Kaya getting dazed than Engineer. Like if they have an answer to one of these things. Yep. And of course they do. I would prefer Kaya resolve between those two cards. A Ragavan. So good. I really wish the creatures in my deck could block. Oh, they took a Kaya from me? Come on. And they actually have blue black or white black with uh, two treasures. This is a card they're going to fucking cast. Jesus. I mean, it does cost them their Urza Saga use. Okay. That was pretty disciplined. Or, or just foolish, one or the other. I'm going to play into Daze with Kaya to play around Daze with Needle. They made a token in response, as they should. Here is Kaya. Do you have another Daze? Okay, Kaya resolved. But now they have two threats. I believe I'm more worried about Ragavan. I guess I could exile Soul Guide Lantern, which shrinks Construct and turns on the rest of my deck. I think exiling Ragavan just has to be the play, though. Stupid Ragavan. One of the big conversations in Legacy going on right now, at least at the time I'm recording this, who knows what Legacy will look like by the time it airs, but is does anything need to be banned? And if so, is it Ragavan or is it Days? And this game is completely different either way. Like, if they don't have Ragavan, they don't get to pull ahead like this. If they don't have Days, they don't get to protect the Ragavan so easily. Like, I. That is tough. To determine. Alright, well, Thoughtseize can take the Ragaband, then I can just die. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can't win this game. I hope you don't think that I am, like, tilted and giving up, because that's not the case. Like, I am having fun exploring the place that Zombardment has in the modern metagame. It just is a tough place, but I am learning a lot, and I genuinely cannot beat what they're doing. I'm dead in two turns and have nothing. There is no top deck in my deck that could get me there. So uh, that was a truly we're dead concession. On to the final round. Maybe we'll get on the board. I'm on the play in the final round. I'm going to keep this hand. I could blind therapy them, name Brainstorm, and just hope they're a blue deck. Or I could looting and give myself more information to therapy with. And I think I should be looting. His looting lets me double spell next turn. The therapies will are pretty good in the graveyard, and I do need a land. Bloodgast and Cabal Therapy can get discarded. That looks pretty good to me. Moment of truth. Is this a deck that just easily wins in spite of this, or is this a deck that's going to die to a parade of Cabal Therapies? I get to shred their hand this turn. Okay, it's Delver. My plan now is Cabal Therapy from hand, and I'm going to name Brainstorm. Name Brainstorm. Didn't get any. There's two Dragon Rage Channelers, though. And now we Marsh Flats, Blood Gas Triggers. Yes. Flashback Therapy. Taking Dragon Rage Channeler. Take those Dragon Rage Channelers. Put them in the graveyard. And now I can fetch, get myself a scrubland, blood gas comes back again, and I'm going to flashback therapy naming Ponder. And then their hand is just Daze and Delver. And I'm going to take the Ponder because Lingering Souls is pretty good at fighting Delver. So they have Delver, Daze, Scalding Tarn in hand right now. And, oh shit. Whoa, whoa, stop. Ah, uh, I forgot about a therapy net. No, they had daze. It doesn't matter. Okay. They would have just dazed it. Okay, Lightning Bolt flips their Delver. There's the other Delver. So they have Daze Lightning Bolt. Again, drawing a land would be great. Always want to draw lands. Never not lands. 
Rave Crawler. Not really what I want. But I can still therapy them. They'll probably bolt, bolt me in response. Then I name days. There's the bolt. Name days. Their hand is now empty. And I'm going to play Grave Crawler. And off we go. Revealing Force of Will, but they don't have a blue card to pitch to it, but I am dead on board. <laughs> this is all happening way too slowly. I need a land for my Lingering Souls. So you're saying there's a chance. Yes, bring that back for fuck's sake. Deck's a wise guy. It's like, would you like to activate the ability? Yeah, yeah, I would. In fact. And cast Lingering Souls. They're going to linger. I'm going to attack with my Grave Crawler. Okay. A plan is coming together here. I double block a Delver. I go to two. And hope they didn't draw Lightning Bolt for their turn. That's all I can do. Two life remaining. Lightning Bolt, or Force of Will's in their hand. Okay. Now we're cooking. So I can play Blood Artist. If they force it, and at least their hand is empty. Okay, Force Pitching Force. You got it. And then... I guess maybe it's better to do that the other way. I don't know. It's debatable. I was trying to gain the extra life by getting Blood Guest into play first. Or Blood Artist into play first. I'm willing to believe that was greedy, but I'm also willing to believe it was dope. Okay, so now I lose the Lightning Bolt, I lose the Ragavan. There's a lot of draws in their deck that are okay though. If they just draw like land or days. Oh, ponder. Shuffle. Show me a shuffle. Goes to shuffle. All right, they drew a land. They're not going to be able to attack this turn. Thoughtseize, perfect. Um, I'm going to Faithless Looting. Because Thoughtseize is dead anyway. Discarding the Blood Gas, it comes back for free. I can't use the Mire, but it is still a land. Back with these two. And then I'm not going to make my land drop yet. The Blood Gas has haste now because my opponent's under 10 life and I can Cabal Therapy, land drop, get both Blood Gas back next turn if I need to. Oh god, they have Mark Tide Regent. Okay. Hard mode activated. No attacks. Okay. What do I need to draw here? Blood Artist is great. Bombardment's great. Blood Artist! That's the thing I said. Okay, Blood Artist is in play. Cabal Therapy, aiming nothing. I'm just trying to get an extra trigger here. I'm going to name Abandon Hope, as you do on Magic Online. Trigger, get back my Blood Gas. Now, if I attack with... Do I have a win here? Like, if I attack with all of these, they have to block one of them. They go to one. If I attack with everything... Yeah, I think they're just dead. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely dead. Blood Artist off the top! Aristocrats! Alright, the deck finally did what it was supposed to do. Nice. Okay, we're playing against Blue-Red Delver with Dragon's Rage Channeler and the whole, the whole bit. I like Sudden Edict. I like Plague Engineer. I like Plow. Kaya's pretty expensive on the draw, but she is really good in the matchup. All right, Genesis Chamber and Priest of Forgotten Gods, the two cuter cards. If you're going to work on this deck, cut these two cards first. I think you probably just want the fourth Lingering Souls in for sure. I think Thoughtseize is worse than Cabal Therapy in this matchup. Just taking damage when you're probably on the back foot anyway, not really where I want to be. I don't really want to be boarding in... A bunch more three drops either, but I think it's where I gotta go. What I gotta do here? I think Village Rights has to be cut too. That's just such a blowout if it gets countered and probably all my creatures are gonna matter. Does that make any sense? I think so. Alright. I'm in. Okay, I mean, this hand is solid. It does all the things I want my deck to do. I can lead on Therapy or I can lead on Grave Crawler. I should probably therapy. I'm going to play the Badlands. If they want to wasteland me, I have enough lands to push through that. 
Okay, days in Cabal Therapy. That's cool with me. You won't get any complaints off that one. Brainstormed with the extra mana. Are they also a surgical? Sure. This is another opponent who's just firing this off. You could wait till my draw step and maybe get another one. But they didn't have a one drop. They cast a super weird brainstorm. And they dazed my Cabal Therapy. My Blind Therapy. They had a lot of faith in me. Right, they've seen my hand. They know I have more mana. So that's fine. Do they have another Surgical for my Badlands? There's like a extremely suspicious pause right now. Okay. Oh, we're in my draw step. Did they suddenly remember how to cast Surgical Extraction? Okay. They did not. I think I just jam my Grave Crawler here. That's the one I care the least about if it gets countered or killed. Between that and carry and feeder, it doesn't matter what order they're in play. Got a land go from my opponent. Drawing more lands is a welcome exchange from me. In with Crawler. I could cast Bloodgast here. I could cast Bombardment here. I'm going to try to play around days where I can, though. And I'm not going to just sink a counter into this carry and feeder. Like, that gets blown out by Lightning Bolt, blown out by Surgical, blown out by anything, basically. Okay. Glad I didn't do it. I'm holding out hope for a Faithless Looting to cash in this Bloodgast basically for free. Delver, okay. That's a good turn from Bombardment. Right, feeder's pretty cool. That turns my Gravecrawler back on. Let's see if they have a Force of Will. They did not. In for two. Okay, just blocking. That makes sense. It was dead anyway. Good call. I'm not going to play my carry and feeder into days. I think I can get more out of it next turn. If I play carry and feeder and then while I still have priority, immediately cast grave crawler. Uh oh, is it time for big daddy marks? True name nemesis. Okay. I have my plague engineers in the deck. Got a plan for that one. Oh, fetch land. So good. Cast blood ghast. Zap ya. Marsh flats. Get back blood ghast. Zap ya. Okay, we're finally bombarding someone. It's only round five. Badlands. Get this back. Best carry and feeder. Blast ya. Fetch. Gonna get my mana all set up here. Bring back Bloodgast. Cast Gravecrawler. Bloodgast has haste now, not that that matters. But it does have it. Okay, that was pretty good. They're at 10. I have Kaya. I think if they had a counter spell, they would have cast it on Bombardment. Like, they had a chance to daze there, and they didn't. Iteration. Got a Delver out of that. Well, that's dead. And they packed it up! We're on the board! Zombardment wins a match in 2021. Let's look at the progression of this league. 0-2 loss, 0-2 loss, 1-2 loss, 1-2 loss, 2-0 win. The deck only got better as we went. In all seriousness, though, let's talk about this deck. Okay, so some of my choices were a little cute. I think Priest of Forgotten Gods and Genesis Chamber are both a little cute. I mean, we did see Genesis Chamber kind of go off. We just happened to be playing against a creature-based combo deck, the game that we had it, so they went off a little harder than I did. So that's unfortunate, but these two cards can definitely be cut. I would want to go up to a four blood artist and maybe also a Zulaport cutthroat. That was just, I was just always wanted to draw this card and three didn't feel like enough. I definitely want the fourth and maybe the fifth. Tide Hollow Sculler just is not a legacy card anymore. Breaks my heart. Sorry, buddy. We had some good times back in Revel Arc Standard, but this is not a legacy card anymore. That's three slots you can work with. You probably want the fourth Lingering Souls just on raw power level of that card. You could play more suppliers, but the deck really isn't like a Hogak deck where you just always want to mill everything all the time. That's not really what this deck is doing, but that is a zombie for your grave crawlers, which is pretty cool. I do actually like one or two Hogaks in this deck, just as an 8-8 thing you can do as a pivot off of the, the nickel and dime bombardment thing. That is just another thing you can do worth your consideration if you're going to work on this deck. Playing around days is a problem, 
because the deck is extremely mana hungry even on like turn five if you have five mana you're probably still going to run into a daze but i think that just is the way it is and there's not a whole lot to be done about it as far as other things you can do a uh, hidden stockpile is a card from kaladesh block i think yeah it, it has the revolt keyword it must be from either revolt so that one is a black white enchantment that revolt in your end step if a permanent left the battlefield this turn under your control or a permanent you control left the battlefield make a 1-1 servo and then you can pay one and sack a creature to scry one maybe hidden stockpile is better than genesis chamber or tide hollow sculler i don't know how many of those i want to play but that's definitely an engine you can have if you expect True Name Nemesis in your metagame, Zealous Persecution is a card that can be played in this deck. You could also probably pretty easily like turn these basic swamps into bayous and play Assassin's Trophy and Veil of Summer in the sideboard, if that's something you want to do, if your metagame calls for it. Like there's a lot of things you can do with this deck, and the core goblin bombardment and like refire my grave crawlers and blood gas thing is extremely powerful but like we saw Uro is just a card that gets played in this format endurance is just a card that gets played in this format both of which are complete nightmares for this deck you would need more or more reliable answers to Uro if you want to be doing this for real like that maybe more swords to plowshares in the sideboard is just where you got to go with that there's a lot of tuning that could still be done here and your metagame will be part of it what you want to beat's part of it how you want to play the deck is going to be part of it as well so there, there's a lot to customize here this is where i'm going to leave it for today though thank you federico for asking me to play this this was fun to revisit this blast from the past with some updates and some ancient technology all the same it was a delight i'm glad we were able to get on the board at the end Thank you all for watching. Remember to like and subscribe the channel and the video. If you want to support the channel or you want me to play your decks, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership. That is a membership perk for subscribing members. If you're shopping for cards, if you want to build this deck, check out the TCG Player affiliate link. Help out the channel while you shop. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe. See you next time.